Welcome to Learning with Philemon. In the previous video, we saw how primary and secondary halogenal alkanes can undergo bimolecular nucleophilic substitution, SN2, to form alcohols. In this video, we will see that tertiary halogenal alkanes undergo a different mechanism, unimolecular nucleophilic substitution, abbreviated as SN1. In tertiary halogenal alkanes, the carbon bonded to a halogen atom X is also bonded to three other carbon atoms. Note that R represents a carbon containing substituent, such as methyl, ethyl, etc. Now let's take a look at the SN1 mechanism. 2-iodo-2-methylpropane is a tertiary halogenal alkane. The carbon bonded to the iodine atom is also bonded to three methyl CH3 groups. Unlike in the SN2 mechanism, the first step is not the attack of a nucleophile on the electron-deficient carbon. In the SN1 mechanism, the first step is the breaking of the carbon-halogen bond. This is the slowest step in the mechanism, and hence the rate-determining step. Since the first step requires only one molecule, the halogen or alkane, the mechanism is called unimolecular. As the iodide ion leaving group takes the electrons from the shared covalent bond, the molecule left behind has a positive charge. A carbocation is formed, as was also seen in the electrophilic addition mechanism. The carbocation is an intermediate, an unstable, highly reactive species that does not last a long time. An intermediate, however, is more stable and last longer than transition states, as we saw in the SN2 mechanism. For more on this, please watch the videos in the energetics playlist. In the second step of the reaction, a nucleophile is attracted to the positively charged carbon atom. In this case, a bond is formed between the oxygen of the hydroxide ion and carbon. In the IB course, you are only required to draw SN2 and SN1 mechanisms with a hydroxide ion as the nucleophile. Check the link in the description to see the added step required if water is the nucleophile. Note that yet again, a halogen is replaced by a hydroxyl group, hence the term substitution. The alcohol formed in this reaction is 2-methyl-propan-2-ol. Remember that in the SN2 mechanism, there was an inversion in the stereochemistry. In the SN1 mechanism, as the nucleophile can attack from both sides of the carbocation, a racemic mixture is formed. Only one optical isomer is drawn in this mechanism. For more on this, please watch the video on optical isomers. Now let's take a look at what factors affect the rate of SN1 reactions. The rate of the reaction depends only on the concentration of the halogen or alkane. The rate equation will have the following format. Increasing the concentration of the nucleophile does not increase the rate of the reaction. For more on rate equations, please watch the videos in the chemical kinetics playlist. There are other factors that affect the rate of substitution reactions, as discussed in the SN2 video. The first factor is the halogen or alkane itself. For SN1 reactions, tertiary react faster than secondary, which in turn react faster than primary halogenyl alkanes. In fact, primary halogenyl alkanes do not react via SN1, but only via the SN2 mechanism. This pattern is due to hyperconjugation. The shared electrons of these carbon-carbon bonds are attracted towards the positive carbon, as depicted by the green arrows. As the electrons are closer to the positive carbon atom, it has a slightly lower positive charge. The more alkyl groups a positive carbon is bonded to, the more stable the carbocation is. Tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary carbocations because they are bonded to one more carbon atom. The rate of reaction is faster for tertiary halogen alkanes because the more stable tertiary carbocation is more likely to form. The leaving group also affects the rate of the reaction, as discussed in the previous video. Iodide ions are less reactive and thus more stable leaving groups. 
Finally, the solvent in which the reaction is conducted affects the rate. SN1 reactions should be conducted in protic solvents. A protic solvent contains oxygen-hydrogen or nitrogen-hydrogen bonds and therefore is able to form hydrogen bonds. Water is an example of a protic solvent. Water forms hydrogen bonds, denoted by the green dotted lines, with the leaving group as its bond with the halogen alkane is breaking. The slightly positive hydrogen atoms of the water molecules are attracted to the lone pairs of the halogen atom. This interaction speeds up the first step of the reaction by making it more likely for the carbocation to form. Thank you for listening. To consolidate your learning, try answering the questions in the description. If you haven't already, please subscribe for more content. Stay curious.